Welcome back. This is part two of our 3D printed DIY smart lamp series, where we continue to show the processes and tools to turn an idea into reality. In this video, we do an exciting part. We are going to assemble the smart lamp. That way it can light our way as we go through additional episodes. Let's get started. First up, tools. We have a saw, a Phillips head screwdriver, and an M2.5 hex bit. A soldering iron. You can check out my soldering for beginner video if you've never soldered before. This is a great project to get started with. Wire cutter and strippers. Some electrical tape. So that's all for the tools. On to the materials next. First up, 2020 extruded aluminum. It's the skeleton of the lamp. Two 10 inch pieces and one 19 inch long piece. You can cut this with about any saw that works with wood. I had these pieces lying around from an old 3D printer. If you buy more than you need, this stuff is versatile and you'll find a use for it. Maybe you'll even want to build a second lamp. An LED light strip. Each one of these square pieces is an LED. You need about 30 LEDs and look for a strip that is IP65 rated because it does protect a little bit from short circuits. Next, a power supply. In this case, I had this one laying around. A five volt power supply that typically comes with cell phones works well. Two things you need to know with the power supply. One, it needs to be five volts, no more, no less. It needs to be 2.0 amps or more. Again, more amps is fine. Don't do less, otherwise you'll have intermittent results or you might even burn out your power supply. Next up, 22 gauge wire. You need about three strips that are each 12 inches long. I'll be using this color-coded white, green, and red wire for today's video. If you're feeling resourceful, you can probably cut some off of your power supply. Nuts and bolts. We will be using five M4 by 12 bolts and five T-nuts. These T-nuts work really well with extruded aluminum when you insert these bolts and nuts into extruded aluminum and twist the bolt to start tightening things down, they lock into place. Really clever way to attach stuff, the brains of it all. The ESP8266 microcontroller. I'll refer to it as the ESP from now on. This holds the program used to display the control page for the lamp, and it also tells the LEDs how to operate. I have a link to this kit below. This kit makes a nice tidy install for this project. You can build the lamp without it though. Here's what the kit looks like when it's assembled. I didn't solder on the capacitor because it's not needed for this project. If you decide to go ahead and do so, just solder it on at an angle so that it fits inside the structure of the lamp. And of course the 3D printed parts. I used PLA for the base and the lid and then TPU for all the other parts. Feel free to print everything in PLA if you prefer. If you don't have a 3D printer, ask a friend. There's also online services that you can send a model to and they'll print it and ship it to you. If you're in the Kansas City area, the Johnson County Libraries have 3D printers available for public use too. Okay, all the tools and materials are accounted for. Let's get building. I've cut the two 10 inch lengths and a 22 inch length of the aluminum. The coating on the IP65 LED strip can be pulled back gently to reveal contacts to solder to. Pay attention to the triangle printed on the LED strip. You want to solder your wires to the flat side of that triangle. I've soldered the wires onto our LED strip, red positive, green being the signal wire, and white being negative. Additionally, I wrapped some electrical tape around this to protect the contacts from shorting out on the aluminum. I've installed the M4 by 12 bolts into the base, total of five of them. So first we'll attach the legs onto the base. You might need to orient the bolts correctly. Now we're gonna get our lamp post installed. So first, very important, take this grommet, whether it's TPU or PLA, and slide that down under there. That's gonna protect our wires a little bit from the bare aluminum. And then take your 22 inch long piece and your LED strip. And what we'll do is start by taking the LED strip and fishing that through the top of the lamp. And if you need a little bit of 
encouragement, you can kind of push and pull on this to slide this LED down the lamp. So go ahead and get that pulled all the way on there. Center it on the 19 inch aluminum rod there. And then go ahead and seat that on the base. What you wanna do is fish these wires through the channels on either side using that grommet to sort of protect them. And then when you have that all the way down, you can go ahead and tighten that final bolt. Install the TPU end caps on each foot. And we'll also install that end cap on the top of the lamp post. We'll install the circular disc on the bottom of the lamp post. Take your power wire. If it's a USB cable, you can clip off the end and you fish that through this hole here in the bottom of the base. Finish that up by tying a knot so that it can't get pulled out. And then what we're gonna do next is hook up these wires to our ESP microcontroller. Okay, once you have all of those wires hooked up, give them a good tug to make sure they don't fall out. And you can go ahead and seat your ESP chip down in the base. We have the negative wire on the top right. We have our LED strip signal wire plugged into D6 on this board, which is the pin D6 on the ESP chip. And then down one more is the red or the positive wire from our LED strip. On the bottom left, we have our negative wire coming from the power supply. And on the very bottom left, we have our positive wire coming in from our power supply. Assembly complete. Next step, load the program to the chip and turn on our lamp. Here's where the project gets really smart. So you'll want to remove the ESP chip from the circuit board so we can load a program onto it. First, we'll make sure Python is installed on our computer. To do so, you can type in CMD into the Windows File Explorer, press Enter, and then type in Python. If it comes up with a Python and a version, you're good to go. You can type in exit, open and close parentheses, press enter. Next, we wanna install the ESP tool, the tool that allows us to talk to the ESP board. So to do that, you type in pip install ESP tool, press enter. It'll go ahead and install the ESP tool. And now we're all set to be able to talk to this ESP chip. Next up, we're gonna load the program to the ESP chip. Open up the device manager and open up the COM port section of the device manager. Plug in your ESP into your computer with a USB cable and watch for what new COM port shows up. In this case, it's COM5. Download the example program found in the description. I've already done that, it's in my downloads folder here. Open the command prompt from where you have that program downloaded. At the top of Windows, File Explorer, you can open up the command prompt by typing CMD again, press enter. And from there, we're gonna run a command to take this esplamp.bin, which is our sample program, and tell Python and ESP tool to flash it to the ESP chip. Okay, so that command is displayed on the screen. and that's gonna load our program onto our ESP chip. Congratulations, you've just installed a brain onto your ESP chip. Next up, connect to the ESP chip's Wi-Fi that it's broadcasting. It's gonna say LED lamp and then a series of numbers. When you do that, most computers will pull up the setup page for you. Go ahead and click on configure Wi-Fi. Select your house's Wi-Fi network. So go ahead and type in your password and then type in a name without spaces that you'll remember. In this case, I'm gonna call it Bedside Lamp 1. Go ahead and click Save. At this point, your ESP chip is gonna reboot. Your computer should go back to your Wi-Fi network of your house. And then you can type in HTTP colon forward slash forward slash Bedside Lamp 
one into your web browser. This page tells us our ESP chip is successfully programmed and is on our Wi-Fi network. Okay, now that we have the ESP chip installed back in the lamp and plugged in, it's the moment of truth. On my phone, I'm showing the control for bedside lamp one. Back there, you see bedside lamp one, which is what we just assembled in this video. Three, two, one. Congratulations, you've just built something useful. These skills can grow into any type of idea that you have that involves electronics, 3D printing, programming. I look forward to seeing you in the next video where we dive deeper into how this lamp was designed. Thanks for watching and God bless.